Hello, hello. Welcome to part three of my small bathroom makeover series. Thank you so much for tuning in. I truly appreciate you. In this video, I will be installing border tape around my mirror and changing out my cabinet hardware. The point of this video is to show you that small changes can go a very, very long way. If you recall in part one, I installed the accent wallpaper. I then installed a stand-up tension rod shower caddy. I will link both of those videos in the description. And now I am updating my vanity. My priority in this vanity was actually to change the countertop out to white. As you can see right now, I am struggling to locate the plastic tip to the razor blade. Exactly why I'm getting rid of this countertop. But since that's a little bit more uh, labor intensive, I'm starting with the border tape and the hardware. What I love about this border tape is that it's very user friendly. Unlike the vinyl wallpaper, it's very easy to cut and it's very forgiving when you're applying it. Sometimes wallpaper can stretch a little bit or get misshapen um, as you're applying it or peeling it off the surface and re-sticking it and peeling it off again just to try to adjust it. But this water tape is very, very user friendly. Once you have it laid out evenly, you can just slide your hand right across and not have to worry about readjusting it. You might have to smooth out a couple of bubbles, but you won't have to continue to peel it off and re-stick it and peel it off, re-stick it because it's starting to kind of angle up or down or left or right. Now when I cut the strips for the border tape, I overshot it by about maybe a solid inch because I'd rather it be too long than too short. Again, it's very easy to cut. Right now you're gonna see me just take the blade and literally just line it up to the mirror and slide it up and down and it's gonna just create a nice clean cut. After I get all of this border tape laid out, I'm gonna go back in and cut each corner at a 45 degree angle so that it actually mirrors, no pun intended, actually mirrors a wooden frame versus having big square overlapping blocks on each corner. I cannot reiterate enough how user friendly this border tape is except right now where I am trying to use the piece that I just cut in order to measure the next piece but like Curly Sue it's just not allowing me to do that so yeah in that case you want to just use your ruler or your yardstick or your measuring tape to just cut each piece individually don't try to line a piece that you've just cut up with a piece that you're going to cut. And frankly, you really don't need to. With this measuring grid on the back, it is so easy to just cut a straight line. I mean, you know, shortcuts aren't always a shortcut. It's kind of funny watching this back too. As I've been editing videos of myself, I notice that I always have my tongue out when I'm like really focused. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know we do that when we're putting on our mascara or whatever, but it's very interesting when I'm editing video. I'm like, mm, should I cut that out? <laughs> do I look thirsty? <laughs> I guess it is what it is. Right now, I'm gonna go back in and cut the bottoms of the vertical pieces. You'll see I'm just using my fingernail to line it up with the crease, and I'm just gonna take the blade and cut right across. Right after this, I'm going to slow things down a bit to show you how I measure and cut the 45 degree angles. You really just have to line up each corner. You don't have to use any special tool you just have to line up the end corner with the inside corner. Two things to note is you wanna make sure that you are pressing down, holding the ruler or whatever measuring tool that you're using firmly onto the mirror so that it doesn't move. And you also wanna make sure that you're not 
pushing the blade into whatever measuring tool that you're using because that will shift it out of place. The only pressure you should be using is on the ruler to hold it steady and then just lightly glide the blade across it. You're not trying to cut through both pieces, you're just trying to cut through the top piece and it will pull right off. Quick side note, another thing that I'm noticing in editing this video is the shirt that I'm wearing, which is just so fitting for this project. I got it from Amazon, by the way, so I guess I'll link that in the description as well. But I feel like I had to persist very strongly during this project, <laughs> getting on the ladder, making sure everything was even. Any type of home DIY project requires persistence, but it's always fun. And the end result makes it totally worth it. Here's a quick before and after, and then I'm gonna move into the hardware. Now this hardware I also got from Amazon. What I don't like about the existing hardware is that it's just a traditional like 25 cent, probably even a 10 cent uh, piece of hardware, which is probably why this complex uses it. I feel like it's just too big for the cabinets. Yes, these cabinets are wide and this vanity is wide, but I feel like really long cabinet pulls should be reserved for really tall kitchen cabinets. Um, you know, those that go like to the ceiling. I think for a regular vanity, like just a simple clean cut, you know, cabinet pull just makes everything look more modern and more sleek. These long cabinet pulls actually, in my opinion, date the bathroom. This is also very simple. Where I could, I just used the same screw that was already in the drawer. Sometimes they had too much gunk on them, so I had to use a newer one, but for the most part, I was able to just use the existing screw. Doesn't this look amazing? I love it. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. Next week, I will be tackling that countertop. Until then, give that subscribe button a little love tap and turn on your notifications.